All right, here we are, Marsh Creek. Today is May 30, May 30th, Thursday. May 30th, Thursday. 2022. River is about at six feet. Uh, time to go uh, jump some logs. Yay rafting. <laughs> Yay rafting. All right, so here we are on Marsh Creek. Uh, in the raft is myself guiding and Ben Guerra and Ben Moores. Uh, we're R3ing the Air 130 E. And Andy and Ian McFarland were uh, out in front in hard shell kayaks. So, Marsh Creek, uh, we of course were expecting a lot of logs, and there were a lot of logs um, partially submerged or kind of sticking out into the, into the creek, but we only encountered two logs on Marsh Creek and one on the middle fork that was completely across the river that we had to portage. Having uh, Andy and Ian out front in hard shells was super beneficial for us in the raft because they were, you know, anywhere from a quarter mile to three quarters or a mile in front of us and they were able to get out uh, a little bit easier and find a spot and give us a heads up of when we needed to get out uh, of the river and uh, get around a log. So this is the first portage that we had. This was a river wide log. And uh, yeah, we were able to eddy out um, about a hundred yards above it. And then we kind of just uh, lined the raft down to the log and it was a pretty big log, uh, sturdy enough, you know, for us to stand on and kind of get the raft pulled up to and pulled over the top of. And we kind of just leapfrog the raft to each other over and around the log and then we were able to jump back in we just had to fight some brush and stuff and i'd say i don't know this probably took us 15 20 minutes maybe to get the raft line down to the log and then uh, get it pulled over the top uh, but not too bad really um, nothing that we weren't used to that's for sure so from previous trips on other rivers so this was our first time for all of us on this trip uh, doing Marsh Creek, so there was a um, there was a lot of unknowns for us, but we were definitely taking our time and and scouting things out. You can see there, uh, Ben Gira is just downstream a little bit from me, and like I said, we had a strap tied to the raft, and we were able to just kind of pass it down to each other uh, around the log. Uh, this was pretty much what Marsh Creek was like the whole time. It was there was some there were some big holes for sure and a couple pretty good sized rapids, but a lot of it was just this kind of busy uh, buggy water um, that kept it uh, pretty fun and exciting the whole time. We were just trying to keep uh, looking out for logs and uh, any other obstructions and stuff, and you can see rocks popping up every once in a while. Uh, but yeah. Uh, this is a lot of what uh, Marsh Creek was like, which was super fun um, and kind of what we were hoping for. We were prepared for the worst, though. We heard plenty of horror stories about, you know, people doing Marsh Creek and saying they'd never do it again at this level. And like I said, it was it was 6-2 um, the morning that we put on. Uh, we put on at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon which was a little bit later in the day, but uh, it was on a downward trend. This was one of the more uh, funner rapids that we came up to. We scouted this rapid beforehand. The creek gets uh, real tight through here, and there's some pretty fun waves and holes. And uh, yeah, this one was uh, might have been my favorite one of uh, all of Marsh Creek. Again, just really fun, big waves, kind of erratic through this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, it was a good time. You can see there's plenty of logs uh, all along Marsh Creek and little log jams and stuff, but uh, a lot of them were uh, just partial and weren't completely across the creek. Uh, the water had been higher previous to this, and I think it might have flushed a lot of stuff out.
this was a pretty typical uh, spot to be in on marsh is you know we got a log sticking you know a third of the way out into the creek and have to kind of work our way around it some big pretty big holes moving through some of these uh, wave trains and it was kind of giving us an idea of what we were gonna run into once we got out onto the actual middle fork so this was one of the bigger rapids that we saw in marsh uh annie and ian in the kayaks had gone far right and we started to get try to get over there and uh there's a pretty good size pour over and we weren't going to make it and the middle of this is just uh it's a mess it's super erratic we're getting pushed around and uh, we get our momentum killed here and then hit one of these holes and get spun around. But uh, we serve for a second, but uh, we're all, everybody's ready to high side. We do a little rebound off the shore and uh, just keep on trucking. Next is uh, probably the scariest log jam that we saw on Marsh Creek. So we got a, three river wide logs here, including that big jam. Um, and this one definitely, if you swam above this, would be a bad, bad deal. So luckily, you know, we saw it early, able to get out in portage, and we had to carry the raft on the shore around it. So we're off Marsh Creek. Uh, we camped the first night at Dagger, and now we are on the Middle Fork. And this is uh, just past First Bend um, before we get to Murph's Hole. And, uh, yeah, gave us a real good idea of what was what was going to be waiting for us down river. So here in just a second, we're going to encounter our first river wide log on the middle fork, which was at teepee hole, um, just down from Murph's hole. Uh, we saw this early. We were able to line the raft on river left of this log and there was a little channel. It's, you can't see it here, but we're sliding the raft between uh, a couple of rocks and moving stuff around. This was a log that ended up flipping quite a few boats from the stories I heard. Uh, and yeah, there was definitely a lot of speed and current running into this. So um, it was kind of a tough move to get across the river. We were on river right above this log and had to make it river left before we uh, ran into it. We had a contingency plan of if we did hit this log that we are all going to try and jump over the top of it. Um, that way we didn't end up swimming underneath it. But luckily we made it over river left and uh, everything was good. Just ate up a little bit of time. Up next is Velvet Falls. Uh, we wanted to take the standard left line, uh, but we noticed this giant log sitting across the pyramid rock. We should have eddied out and scouted it and, and got a better game plan, but we just tried to sneak by the end of the log and still make it back left. Uh, we didn't make it. Uh, we had tee up and hit the meat of it. Um, we might have made it if we would have kept paddling, but you see we get angle, and if we would have kept going, maybe tee up and we just get crushed. Um, I remember getting pulled down pretty deep, but we're all wearing super high flotation jackets and uh, popped up fairly quick right next to the raft. And we were, all three of us were back on top of the raft in under a minute for sure. Uh, we just kind of rode it out there for a minute. There wasn't anything coming up. And so we didn't immediately flip it back over. We kind of got our bearings and then flipped the raft back over and tried to gather our stuff. We ended up losing this, my guide paddle, but luckily we had uh, some spare paddles. And yeah, all in all, not too bad. Um, just a pretty rowdy flip, uh, but a, a great memory for sure. Next is the chutes. Um, this is such a great rapid at lower water. I was really curious to see what it looked like, but uh, just kind of a big, long wave train really nothing nothing too crazy going on here there's on the left is that rock that you got to make the move around that lower water which gives a ton of people including myself trouble sometimes uh but yeah just a fun rapid at high water
Okay, next up is Pistol Creek. Uh, I was really curious to see what this was going to look like at higher water. I knew that there would probably be a lot of crazy hydraulics going on in there um, just because of the S that it makes and all that water banking up against the rocks. And so the plan was to try and basically put a straight line right through the S. And you can see here as we start to get a view of it, a uh, pretty good sized hole on the river right. We're able to sneak that on the left and then we get pushed up against the rocks at the bottom a little bit. But yeah, a lot of pretty powerful hydraulics in here and um, such a cool thing to see it at this high of water when, you know, you see it so often in the summertime and what it looks like and all these rocks that are normally quite a ways out of the water are now, you know, almost completely submerged, which is pretty cool to see. Second night, we camped at Sunflower on River Right, right next to the Hot Springs. Uh, nice spot for a small group like ours. Literally, little brotherly love happening there. <laughs> uh, Tappan Falls. Uh, again, one of the coolest things about this experience, first time uh, doing the Middle Fork at high water for me was just seeing all these rapids uh, and what they look like with all this water in the canyon uh, versus what I'm used to seeing them at. So Tappan Falls was no exception to that. Um, pretty amazing to see because it's such a distinctive rapid when you're there at lower water and to see it just, you know, pretty much washed out. It's pretty wild. Up next is Tappan 3 or Cove Creek. I didn't even realize we had gone through this when we did. Again, a, a rapid that sticks out in my mind at lower water and I know what it looks like. And then to come through here at this time, uh, yeah, we pretty much went through this and did not know what it was at the time. So again, some big waves, real splashy, uh, really fun water is, I mean, it's like being out in the ocean, the waves are so erratic and we were definitely on high alert all the time of just like getting hit. You know, we're in a 13 foot raft and we get hit on the side and you know, it feels like it has the opportunity to flip us. Here's a good example of that. We were laughing all the way through this. I was getting thrown up in the air on the back, just, you know, big giant wave train. Of course the video doesn't even do it justice, but you can see that. <laughs> There's a lot of water moving down through there. We were averaging, if I remember right, 10 to 12 miles an hour the entire time we were going through, and that was without paddling. Uh, third night, we stayed at Survey, uh, one of my favorite camps on the Middle Fork for sure. Uh, big eddy here with lots of wood collecting in it. Up next is Weber. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Just how powerful a lot of the waves were in these rapids, even though they're kind of washed out. Uh, we felt pretty small in our 130E. Ben and Ben are throwing their weight around up there and they did an awesome job of uh, staying on top of it. They were definitely getting pushed around up front. Here we are messing around, the kayakers doing the brown claw and the dorky rafter wave. Having a good time. Lower cliff side had some massive holes on the right side. Um, you can't, you don't get a real good look at them here, but uh, yeah, we were, you can see us looking over. We would have got trashed if we would have went over there. So luckily we didn't. Next up is rubber. Uh, the rapid that we heard the most about when we were telling people we, we were going to do this high water trip. Uh, there's one or two groups there are scouting it. Uh, we did not scout it. We had a pretty good idea what we wanted our line to be. Um, I like scouting rapids, so it's never, you know, never a problem for me to stop and scout them, but uh, sometimes it's fun just to kind of blast through there. We knew we needed to look out for the big lateral on the left, so we definitely talked about if we were going to hit that, uh, we needed to square up with it for sure and dig into it with those paddles, pull over the top. Uh, we were probably farther right than I would want to be. If I could do this again, I'd be a little bit more in the middle and uh, take a fun line and try to just drive right through that V. Uh, we end up getting hit 
on the right side with the lateral and then on that big one on the left. So we got the guys got tossed around a little bit. Um, not the cleanest line in the world, but uh, made it through unscathed with a little bit of luck. But uh, yeah, that's one I'd really, really like to do again. I think we can we can run a better line through that. This on the right is a group that I think flipped um, not long before we got there. Every, everybody looked good. So yeah, again, not the cleanest line ever, but uh, we made it through. Devil's Tooth had some huge holes over the top of it um on the video you can hear us all look over and go whoa which is pretty crazy another one that was completely underwater next up is house of rocks uh at this point we're really just trying to avoid these big holes uh this 13 foot boat felt real small uh in impassable canyon and so, yeah, we were taking very conservative lines, trying to avoid everything that we could. Yeah, our goal was definitely to avoid the big holes and try not to flip again. Um, we we're just trying to get through unscathed. A lot of powerful hydraulics through House of Rocks. All those giant rocks are underwater, so lots of crazy stuff going on. One of the things I'll always remember about this trip is, is going through an impassable canyon and there's all these rocks that just tower above the surface of the water uh, in the summertime and later in the year. And then to see all these rocks underwater or almost underwater was wild. Here we are at the confluence, you know, the saddest place on earth because, you know, we just want to go back up river and do the middle fork again. This was such an incredible three night ninja style trip. We packed lightweight, we ate freeze dried meals. Uh, each person had one dry bag that they brought with them. And we R3 would a 13 foot boat down Marsh Creek in the middle fork at high water and just had a blast. Can't thank Andy and Ian enough for inviting us on this trip and being our scouts out in front in the hard shells it, especially in marsh creek without them out front and being able to tell us when we needed to get out uh, it's so difficult to get a raft eddied out in that fast moving water with tiny eddies uh, even a light raft like this uh, and so that was so beneficial to have them there and and uh, yeah it would have been tough to do it without them Thanks for watching everybody and uh, I hope to put another one of these videos out soon. Until then, keep it sunny side up.